guys, I'm Kaluna, and welcome back to another episode of Screenshots. Halloween may be over, but it isn't quite Christmas just yet. Although you wouldn't know by the ever-increasing amount of Christmas stuff appearing before Halloween was even over. So, in retaliation, I decided to make my Halloween videos go on just a little bit longer because I have one more thing I'd like to talk about. It's not really Halloween specific, but it's got monsters and stuff, so it definitely fits. So, we're going to be taking a look at something rather unique this time. Supernatural, the anime series. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry no more. So if you've never seen Supernatural or just not spent any time on Tumblr to get the entire story told to you in a series of a million gifts, here's a quick background. The show centers around Dean and Sam Winchester, two brothers who hunt paranormal creatures and try to stop the apocalypse every other week. The show originally debuted on the WB in 2005, then moved over to the CW in 2006 and has been running ever since. They are currently on the 12th season of the show. The show became popular enough that in 2011, Studio Madhouse, the anime studio behind Death Note and One Punch Man, decided to adapt the series into 22 episodes. The anime covers the events of the first two seasons, combining episodes directly based on episodes from the live-action series and original episodes unique to the anime. This is definitely a unique take on an adaptation. This is one of the first, if not the first time, that a live-action Western TV series was adapted into an anime, though if there were others before this, please let me know. Because this was basically an unprecedented process for these creators, they had a lot of questions that they had to ask as they were going through the adaptation process. How would they handle the transition from live action to anime representing actual actors in an anime form? How would the show translate culturally to a Japanese audience given the very American nature of the setting and folklore involved? And probably most significantly, how would the show handle the switch from hour-long episodes to half-hour-long episodes? Needless to say, this anime had a lot of challenges to overcome, so let's take a look and see how well they did. There's so much to address with what comes with this adaptation, so let's start with what is arguably the most important thing first. 12 out of the 22 episodes of the series are based directly on episodes from the original show, while 9 are unique to the anime, and 1 is based on a comic spin-off. Like I mentioned before, the live-action series were hour-long episodes, while the anime series were half-hour episodes, so this had a bit of a hard problem to solve in terms of pacing. Admirably, the show faces this problem head-on and tries to condense the episodes down, rather than split full episodes of the original into two anime episodes to tell the same story. This has some interesting results, and like you might expect, some instances work better than others. Sadly enough, an example of an episode that really didn't work well as an adaptation was actually the first episode, The Alter Ego. This episode is a remake of the season 1 episode, Skin, in which the boys have to deal with a shapeshifter. The episode starts in Medias Res, which is pretty typical for a first episode of an anime, but it doesn't combine very well with a story that they're already shortening down. It feels like the show skips over traditional character introductions to get down to the business with the story, but the story they chose to open with really doesn't fit. What? You're not the only one who's been through hell. Dean has, to, I mean, I have too, you know? You don't know what you're talking about. If you're gonna forego the introductions of your characters, it probably isn't best to have them first fight a monster that impersonates them, and having intimate knowledge of those characters is what helps them figure out who is who. This leaves this kind of a bit of a confused and jumbled mess, and is just kind of a weird way to start off an anime. Thankfully, the show finds its footing with its second episode, which I think is actually a really good example of an adaptation. This episode, Roadkill, based on a season 2 episode of the same name, honestly feels like it would have been a better opener for the series. The episode starts from the perspective of the random citizen of the week as she encounters a ghost and meets the Winchester brothers. This episode just works so much better for a pilot, and just would have been a much stronger series opener. The way that the brothers get introduced to the victim, she's kind of used as a cipher for the audience and overall just introduces us to the world of the supernatural. This is crazy. You're trying to catch a ghost? Yeah, something like that. This episode really works as an adaptation because the main beats of a typical supernatural episode are still present and they manage to fit into the smaller time frame without feeling all smashed together. Here's a basic supernatural episode outline. 1. Random person gets attacked by the monster of the week. 2. Sam and Dean roll into town to solve the mystery. 3. They begin investigating either at the scene of the crime or a random library. 4. They meet a random person who is affected by the monster attacks, usually a relative. 5. Another person is attacked by the monster. 6. They continue investigating until an important clue is found. 7. There's the showdown with the monster of the week. 
8. There's a quick mention of a plot point dealing with the overarching plot of the season. And 9. Conclusion of the episode. Roadkill manages to hit all of these beats within this episode, even given the 30 minute time frame, because they smartly cut out a lot of the fluff in the middle. As opposed to Alter Ego, which feels like it skipped over the important bits, this episode kept what mattered and trimmed the rest. Sometimes the changes in these anime episodes don't have to do with condensing or cutting down, but kind of changing the overall story of the original episode. An example of this is Moonlight, which remakes the season 2 episode, Heart. The original episode was focused on Sam finally starting to move on after Jessica's death and start to find love again, only to fall in love with a woman who ends up being a werewolf and he has to kill her. The majority of the episode builds up their relationship and the heart of it lies in Sam trying desperately to find a way to spare Madison, but eventually still having to kill her. The anime episode keeps a lot of that, but makes some significant changes. The anime version really de-emphasizes the romance between Sam and Madison, almost treating her more like the standard NPC archetype that shows up in every episode. You just want to leave her alone up there? She's going back to her normal life now. And the last thing I want to do is drag Madison into our lives. Wouldn't be fair to her. Because of this, the overall impact that made Hart so effective feels like it's missing here. In the original, seeing that relationship blossom and then eventually fall apart is really tragic and effective, but the anime episode, it kind of feels more like it's just another day on the job for the Winchesters. I watched the episode with someone who hadn't watched the live action series, and he didn't have the same problems that I did, not even noticing the stuff that I was sad to see absent. Sometimes having that pre-existing knowledge of the supernatural universe can make these episodes a little frustrating to watch, but that's kind of a point against the anime because, well, a lot of the people who are going to watch this probably were familiar with the series already. Thankfully, there are a large number of anime original episodes, and that allows the staff to be a bit more creative with the stories and visuals. Sometimes they use these episodes to give a bit more background on some minor characters, like the episode that shows how Sam and Jess originally started dating. Others were just kind of standalone, which allowed them to spread their wings a little more with the creativity. My favorite example of such an episode is The Spirit of Vegas, where the boys find themselves in Las Vegas and Dean ends up getting cursed by a Japanese poverty god. Because of course he does. This episode manages to strike an impressive balance between capturing the particularly American feel of Vegas as a setting, while also telling a story that feels especially Japanese, without the two things clashing with each other. Huh. I wonder if throwing away the coin was enough to get rid of him. Uh, Dane? What are you doing? The montage in which the little Japanese man laughs mischievously into his tea, as Dean becomes increasingly miserable as he fails to get rid of him, is an example of some of the best this series is capable of, feeling like the best of both worlds between anime and supernatural. It's the strength of episodes like this in particular that made me really wish that most of the episodes had been anime originals, other than the initial story setup and maybe conclusion of the series, making this more of a standalone companion piece rather than adapting as many episodes as they did, but I recognize that would have been extremely time-consuming and very, very difficult for them to do, but it still would have been really nice. As a product of Studio Madhouse, this anime has a really cool visual design, though there are definitely some things about it that are hit or miss. A big thing to focus on with this is the visual design of the characters. The show really wanted to make sure that Dean and Sam in the anime looked pretty close to their real-life counterparts. There are a few details that are different, like Dean's hair and eye color not matching Jensen Ackles for some reason, but overall they look pretty close. However, the show does take liberties with other character designs that are a bit... odd. Some are small, like Jessica's hair color being red instead of blonde, and others are just bizarre, like the redesigns for the characters of Bobby Singer and Missouri Mosley. You get a demon in one, they're trapped, powerless. It's like a satanic roach motel. Bobby? What? Hey there, Sammy. Hi, Dean. Long time no see. My guess is that the reason they changed these so much is kind of just as a means of introducing the Japanese audience to the world of Supernatural, giving them kind of a visual shorthand for the kinds of personalities that these characters would have. Some redesigns work in the anime's favor, mostly for the designs of the monsters the boys encounter. The yellow-eyed demon in particular looks really imposing. One thing you'll notice immediately with this show is its use of light, dark, and colors, and its weird obsession with shadows. The scenes that take place at night, or generally in low-light environments, look great, and the show's mood comes across really well. But when things have to happen out in the sunlight, things can get a bit weird. <laughs> Seriously, look at this stuff! It looks like the artists were using a thick tip sharpie to draw some of these scenes with how many thick black lines are all over the place. 
called anime, and it's an art form. The show does seem to rein this in as the episodes progress, but it is definitely really weird and jarring at first. Overall, the visuals serve really well to make the supernatural elements of the show pop, but the more mundane human bits can suffer a bit for it. One other important thing to talk about is the voice acting. For the anime series, they made sure to get the original actors from the live-action show both in English and Japanese. In the Japanese version, the actors that provided the dubbed Japanese voices for both Sam and Dean in the live-action show, Yuya Ichida and Hiroki Tochi, play the roles in the anime as well. The English version tried to pull off the same thing, but due to scheduling issues, Jensen Ackles was only able to voice Dean for the last couple episodes of the series, leaving Andrew Farrer to play the role for the rest. Plus, all of the suspects that were arrested claimed that they were in a different place at the time that the murder was committed. She's alive, because she was outside talking to me on the phone at the time. Looks like we finally caught a break. Farrer does a really good job of imitating Jensen's voice and overall was a good choice for the role. However, Jared Padalecki does voice Sam all the way through. The switchover from live action performing to voiceover may not seem difficult, but there's a lot of nuance to the technique, especially in these performances. You have to do a lot of lip flapping matching, and with Japanese syntax being very different from American syntax, it can be a bit of a challenge, especially for people who have very limited dubbing experience. Jensen does a better job of this than Jared does, which makes sense given that he's had other voice acting experience while Jared doesn't. Even though it's obvious early on that Jared is new at this, he gets much better as the show goes on and it doesn't get in the way of the enjoyment of the show. What did you do with Dean? You think you can fool me with your pathetic attempt at being my brother? None of the side characters are voiced by their live action show counterparts, but the voice actors they did get were fine. Before I wrap up, I just want to address a couple things that really didn't fit anywhere else. I want to give a special shout out to the makers of this DVD box set because there's some really cool stuff on this. The set has introductions to each episode with Jensen and or Jared talking a bit about the episode's plot or significance, and it just gives another chance to see these guys be goofs. It's not quite Clerks the Animated Series level of goofy introductions, but it still works just fine. Also, I was really impressed by the range of the behind-the-scenes material that they included, going into a lot of depth about the how and why of the anime's creation, even going so far as to highlight the production process almost step-by-step step in a way that was fascinating to watch. As a bonus, watching these features really drives home how important the whole Shadows thing was to the creators of the show. They mention it like a dozen times, seriously. Maybe it's because I'm used to really lazy anime box sets only having the episodes and maybe clean introductions and outros, but this one was really impressive. So while this isn't a perfect series, it's still really fun and enjoyable to watch. If you're already a fan of the Supernatural series, then you're probably going to enjoy this so long as you don't get too hung up on being really nitpicky about the changes they make. The creators really made an effort to homage the original show without it just being a straight copy, so I consider it more of a companion piece rather than just a standalone thing. If you've seen this anime series but not the live-action counterpart, then you should probably give it a watch. I think you would probably really enjoy it. The studio left this off at the end of season 2, kind of giving it a bit of an open-ended conclusion so that way if they wanted to do more episodes they could, and from the looks of the behind the scenes they were very interested in doing that. Unfortunately, given that it's been 5 years since the anime came out, that doesn't seem too likely. If they ever get another shot, I'd like to see them focus on more anime unique episodes rather than adaptations, so they can play to their strengths more and do more of what worked well in this time. Well, it's nice to meet you, Sam Winchester. So, why are you always alone? Don't you have friends? I guess I'm just not used to getting close to people. Obviously, your mileage will vary based on your level of attachment to Supernatural, how willing you are to watch an adaptation of the original series, and how willing you are to put up with a lot of the changes that they make. But if all that works out for you, and you're a fan of Supernatural, you're probably going to like this. So what other kinds of live action shows would you like to see get an anime counterpart? Post your thoughts in comments below, I'm really curious to see what kinds of things you guys would like to see have an anime counterpart. Well, thank you guys for joining me on my Halloween month of videos. We'll be getting back to the regular kind of series of videos after this. I'm Kaluna, and thanks for tuning into Screenshots. See ya! Hey guys, I'm going to be at Yomacon this week, so if you guys are in the Detroit area, you should come and visit me. I'll just be kind of walking around the con, so feel free to come up and say hi if you're a fan of my work. See you there!
Vision.